What's going on YouTube, it's United Gamer 101 here and welcome to an in-depth guide on building settlements. Today I'm going to be discussing things like building a foundation, setting up walls, how to do a two-story building, how to do a tall building, generators, power, switches and lights, turrets, setting traps, doing the little LED light that you can see right there where I spelled out UG and stuff like that with little tips and tricks on building your settlement. If you are looking for a more basic tutorial, be sure to check out my other guide where I show how to do food, water, basic defense, and resources in general. Now the game has only been out for about a week now, so I still don't know everything, but I'm going to do my best to explain these things in the most simple way possible. And if you guys could do me a huge favor and like and favorite the video, it would really help me out a lot. This video took a lot of time and effort to put in to build this thing and to learn everything for myself to explain it to you guys. Also, if you would like to subscribe to my channel for more Fallout 4 guides, be sure to do that as well. But without further ado guys, let's go ahead and take a tour of my current home that I went and built today. It did take me only a day, but I worked on it all day. And the main thing about this is it takes a lot of supplies to gather to do this. Now when taking a tour of my home, I am going to show you what we're going to be learning in this video. First off, as we enter the house, we need to turn on the lights so we can see what we're doing. This is going to be some of the information that we learn about switches, power, and lights. As we take a tour of my home, we can see that we have a little kitchen area in here with a little cooking stove, a little pot stove, and then we're going to make our way up to the upstairs, which is basically we're just going to have a little bathroom with a TV in it, because we all need a TV in a bathroom. And then we're going to have my crafting station with like my chemistry lab, my bed, because I haven't really made me a bedroom yet, my armor station, and pretty much anything in that category. And then up top, we're going to have all the generators that we have. I am going to try to organize this later on in my own time, but I kept it up there just for the video's sake. Now after all that, we're going to make our way downstairs to the entertainment room. Although downstairs is going to have something that's quite interesting for us. We see this little red laser trip. We don't really want to trip that and set off a little trap, so we're going to go ahead and disarm that. I will be showing you how to do that later on as well. How to disarm and how to set up a trap. And this is basically my downstairs, which is basically just furniture, you know, to make it look nice, which really doesn't have to be that much explaining to you guys. It's basically just your own type of creatment. But that is pretty much my current home. But that is pretty much my current settlement here in Sanctuary Hills. And I'm going to show you guys how to pretty much do anything that is inside this house. And then you guys can use your own little creative mind to make your awesome houses. But before we leave and actually start doing the guide, I want to show you guys what actually happens when we set off this trap. So it's probably what you guess. When you cross a laser wire, the flamethrower goes off and you get damage done to you. But now it's actually time to start building our settlement. So I went ahead and cleared out where my actual home was and we're going to start from the ground up. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure you have level ground. I actually saw this asked a lot in my basic tutorial on how you level out ground. Basically if you go to the floors you'll see these concrete blocks. Before you do that, if you're actually in Sanctuary Hills, luckily some of this is actually flattened out for you. But if not, I will show you what you need to do. But for our sakes, we're going to go ahead and just lay these plank woods, mainly because it saves us materials and we don't have to deal with it as much. But we are still going to need these concrete blocks because we don't want this tiny of a home. We want a bigger house. Now that we have all our wooden floors laid out, we need to have some of these shack foundations, which is basically just concrete under the wooden floors, but it helps you level out ground. This is what you're going to need if you want to level out ground. If you notice, once I have one laid beside the wooden plank, they automatically start to connect to each other, so it levels through the ground. This is so amazing, otherwise it would be so difficult to build anywhere, so make sure you check these out. You're going to need a lot of concrete for these though. So go ahead and make your settlement how big you want to be with or how much room you have. If you notice, I don't really have any room up here. Uh, but make sure if you're making it so big, you're going to need a lot of resources. Not just like wood and stuff for like power. You're going to need a lot of copper, circuitry for certain turrets and stuff. So make sure you don't make it too big. Otherwise, you're going to be grinding a lot of materials. Now that we have our concrete foundation laid, we need to go ahead and put up some walls over our foundation. The first thing that I like to do is go ahead and place it around the outside just to get it done. And if you'll notice... I ran into a little error right here. I have bush in the way, so I can't do that. Basically, we're going to have to come back later and erase that. As you'll see, I couldn't get away around it. I tried it right here, and this is what I did on my actual home. If you recognize it, I had a little area right here. So basically, what I like to do, if I can't fit something, I like to just press L2 and R2 to rotate until I mess with it enough, and it wants to fit. If you notice, eventually, it wants to fit. 
I ended up having to fix it anyway, but sometimes you can luck out and get something to fit when it shouldn't. But go ahead and finish laying walls around your foundation. Once we're finished with that, we need to have ourselves a little door right here. Now you can use wood or metal. Technically, you could be doing this entire building in metal. It's just a lot harder to find steel than wood, so I like building in wood. And I like the little log cabin look. But I went ahead and made my door metal. Basically, we just leave you a little open area and then place you a little door frame there. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. You want to just put you a door there, pick a color, and that's pretty much it. But now we have ourselves a foundation with walls and a door. We are making some progress. Now I'm going to show you how to make it a tall building or a second story building. We're going to start off with second story. So when you're wanting to add another story to your building, second, third, fourth, it could be whatever, I recommend using this wood floor that I really think works the best. Now watch out because technically this could be placed anywhere and this confused me for, for the longest time. I could never understand why it wasn't level. If I try to place this somewhere, which you can, if you notice it is not level with the walls. If you walk up, you notice it kind of like skips a little area and I could not figure out why it was like that. Basically what you want to do is make sure you actually delete the floor and then place that thing as the floor. So it like replaces the floor with stairs and then your next level. After doing that, I recommend using the wood floor shack upper floor. It's basically meant for the upper floor and then you just wanna do the same thing you did on your core level and then you can go higher and higher and higher as high as you wanna go. Now since we went ahead and saw a second story building example, which was my original home area, we we're gonna be building a taller building. And when I say taller building, I mean like we're basically two walls or three walls are stacked on top of each other to where it's like a tall living room area or something. And one thing I wanna point out, you cannot just stack walls on top of each other. There is a specific way you actually have to do this. And basically you have to place a floor pattern or like the shack upper floor outside of your original home. And then you gotta place walls on top of that to connect to each other. Now if you'll notice, they actually always need a top upper floor on the outside. So I literally have to go around the rim of my home and place roofs on the outside. That's the only way to stack these. You can technically stack it right here as you can tell, but there's a big gap in your building. And I am like a perfectionist, so that would bother the crap out of me. So you literally have to go on the outside and stack roofs all the way around. So that's what I'm basically gonna go ahead and do. I will cut back once I have all these wooden floors on the outside of my house. So there we go. Now we have the actual core of our entire home and now we need to place a roof. Like I said, I'm not building a second story building in this one. It's not that hard. You basically just put that little second floor like staircase and then you just stack floors again and you can keep going up and up and up. This is a little bit more complicated, so I thought I'd show this off. And if you'll notice right here, it's not quite working for me. Sometimes this is gonna happen. It's not the best mechanics for building a home in Fallout 4, I'm gonna be honest. The game is amazing, I love it. But some of the things are here, if I'm being nitpicky, it's just so frustrating and you have to do certain things to get it to work. So basically, if something in this guide does not work for you, just play around with it until it works. That's what I had to do to learn. Like, the, honestly, the strategy guide that I bought with the game did not explain it any more than the actual game did. Not the resources, not anything. So I had to pretty much just teach myself, which I'm okay with. So obviously after we have all our walls done, if it's a tall building or just a normal building, you just wanna place a roof on top of it if that's as high as you wanna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and it's gonna close up our house. Now basically, now is the time we gotta start doing some power and some lighting because it's really dark in here. Before we actually go on to power and lighting, I wanted to show you guys something. Now say you wanted to create yourself a little room. There is some things you really need to know. If you'll notice, the walls will not connect on the inside once you created your outer rim. Basically what you're going to want to do to fix this, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit extra room here just in case we need something to work with. You're going to actually have to remove your outer walls as well as sometimes your roof. Now if you'll notice, if I go all the way around, I'm going to make this little room right here, it would not originally connect. So what I'm going to have to do is remove the outside walls and then bam, it's going to work. So go ahead and have your wall ready. You don't have to actually place it down. Just take out a wall and then we're going to place this to the side. Now there we go, we have our little room area. Now, one thing I have not yet to figure out, and I will show you, and I still cannot figure this out, and if you guys can let me know, let me know. I cannot make it to where there's a door here. I cannot make a room with a door. So I don't think there's a way you can possibly do that because you cannot lay it no matter how many times I've tried. And I will show you, metal or wood, 
If I try to place a little door frame here, it will not lay. I can place it a little bit ahead sometimes, but it cannot like lock in like it's supposed to. So basically, I guess they want your rooms to be open, you know. I don't really like that, but uh, I can't complain too much. One more thing I wanted to point out before we go to power is building a basement like I did. It's not much different than actually building an upstairs. What you want to do is like I had a hole in my wall right there, right? I add one more of the little center block bases and then I add the staircase going down. So it keeps the level, it keeps it good, and then it's pretty self-explanatory what you want to do after that. You want to go ahead and add another one of those cores to the bottom of that and then bam you got a whole nother floor down and then just add yourself some walls add on like say I didn't have these right here I would want to place those there and then just keep going with it and then add walls all around it like I was doing a regular floor that's pretty much how you build a basement I just wanted to point that out just in case anybody got any confusion and wanted to build themselves a basement So now it's time to actually learn about power switches and everything in that category, which is probably the main reason this is being made, that and setting traps. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of generators and everything, but first off I would recommend just go ahead and laying some light bulbs. Now one thing to notice, you are going to need so much copper to light up your entire home, so make sure you are grabbing as many resources as you can whenever you're out and about, you know, doing your quest. So go ahead and lay you some lights. I'm going to try to take this one step at a time and show you guys on how to do everything. First off, I'm just going to show you how you need to even light them in general. Then I'm going to show you how you can actually set a switch to where you can turn your lights on and off like a regular house, which I think is really cool. You know, anything that can, you know, I can actually create in this, like a real home, is really neat to me. So now that you've set up your lights, you're going to need power. You need generators to create power. You can use different ones, like bigger ones, to produce 3, 5, or 10. Now, these really only need, like, one, so you're going to go ahead and just place a 3, and it'll be fine. But the thing is, this generator by itself is going to do no good for you on these lights. You're going to need some kind of switch or thing to actually conduct it to the lights. Now, there's two ways you can actually do this to actually move the power throughout a house. You can use a pylon or a conduit. And right now, we're going to use a pylon, and I would recommend using that unless you're going to be actually placing a lot of lights in a big home. And I'll show you how to use a conduit later on, but we're going to stick with a pylon right now. So once you have that place, along with your generator, you're going to need to press triangle to attach a wire. Now, if you notice, it works through roofs, but not walls. I do not know why. If I try to move it over here where it goes through a wall, it will not work. But occasionally, it goes through a roof. But I'm going to show you guys a trick, so pay attention. And this works for anything. If you notice, I'm moving it, and it goes between red and green, red and green. What you can do for almost anything that uses a wire to connect it, basically place it if it's on the outside, no matter where it is. Like, say you place a generator on the outside along with a pylon. Go ahead and connect them on the outside, keep them connected, and then move the pylon to wherever you want it. Now normally it is going to be red if you can't fit it there. Basically what you're going to want to do is just move it around until you finally see a little green mark and hit connect, hit X or A, whatever you're using. And then bam, you got it connected. Just basically play with it a lot until you finally get it to where you want it. That's basically all I've had to do for this entire thing of learning how to build a settlement. But right now I'm actually making me a staircase just to get on top of here because I'm going to go ahead and put this pylon up here. If you don't mind it being up top, I recommend having one on the side right here and then one on top of your building because that's going to spread everywhere. And I recommend using a pylon large. Save up the copper. Do not get a small one because the range is so much smaller. But go ahead and find it in the little connections area. I went to the wrong area myself. And go ahead and place it somewhere up top. Now that we've gotten one on the side and then one up top, we need to connect the original generator to this pylon up here and then from that pylon to the next one basically with a generator you only need that as the core pretend it's like the core of something and then it can literally chain react to each other it can chain react to different pylons to the little conduits it can go in between it can go from a generator to a switch to a pylon which we're going to discuss in a little bit but if you notice bam we got ourselves some lights the lighting in the room looks beautiful Place as many lights as you want, move them around, you know, you can see the little range and the differences in between them. Just place as many as you can, it's going to take a lot of copper and just try to light the room up as much as possible. Eventually you can be able to do conduits in between like the smaller areas that don't connect, like from a generator to a conduit all the way around the house, or at least the bottom part, and then like the pylons cover the rest, or the majority. Now that we have all of our light bulbs set up and all of our power going, we need to actually set up a switch to where we can control the lights and turn them on and off. 
Otherwise, if you do not have a switch like this, you cannot turn them off on your own thing. You can like turn off the generator, but you know, let's make it as much like home as possible. Now, here's what I was talking about earlier in my little trick thing. If you notice, my switch would not originally connect to the generator. So I moved it to a place where we could actually connect and then I can just kind of move it to my own pace to where I actually want it and I can finally see it. If you see that, it goes from red to green till I finally find an area where I like it, or at least I can deal with. Now that we actually have the switch connected to the generator, it is still not controlling the lights. If you turn it on and off, it will not work. You gotta think, it needs to go from the generator to the switch to the pylons or the conduits, depending on what you're using. So you need to go ahead and remove and then go from the and then go from the generator and then go from the generator to the switch to the rest of your pylons or conduits whatever you're using so make sure you have to do it like this now if you notice this time my pylon will not connect to my switch this is what i'm saying you got to play around with it a lot and i want to show this i could cut this but i need you guys to know you know just in case you guys get stuck this happens you know it's part of the game it wasn't perfectly constructed but what you want to do is i'm going to go up here and i'm going to try to remove this wire so it doesn't mess it up and then I'm gonna move this pylon inside the house so where I can connect it to that switch. Once it's actually connected to the switch I'm gonna move it outside and move it around till it finally fits somewhere as you'll see. Do you notice how I finally found a spot where it turned green? There you go. Now it's working. And now you can actually control it to the switch, but we need to go ahead and connect that pylon back to the other one so it can control the entire house. Now if you notice when we're coming home from our long day of work in the Brotherhood of Steel or the Minutemen or the Institute, wherever you are, you can turn your lights on and off. Well, well done. Next I'm going to show you how a conduit works. And I'm going to go ahead and place one on the wall right here. Basically what you want to do is place this around the wall on the floor on the roof depending on where it is You can place them throughout your entire house no matter where you are And then you can go from the switch to, the, to each of them and connect them and it basically works the same as a pylon But it's basically a very small range So the only bad thing about this is that well it takes a lot of resources But the good thing is it can reach the places that the pylon can't so you're gonna need a lot of copper basically so you guys have pretty much figured out power now. I mean, it pretty much works the same for everything else too. Like um, any kind of thing, you see a little power thing, it's basically either gonna be directly connected with a wire or just with a pylon or something. Like a fan, same thing. Let's go ahead and place a couple fans up here that works as a light and a fan. So that's pretty much how power works. You can go with a pylon or go with a conduit. And I recommend using a switch to control everything because it looks cooler. Next, we're going to be working on setting traps. Now, basically, I'm not going to go over turrets because it's pretty much self-explanatory. They're pretty easy. Some of them require power. Most of them don't. You just got to create them. But I'm going to show you guys how to actually set a trap. Now, we saw the little flammable trap, so we're going to use that. You can use those other little mine things, too. But the flammable thing just looks cool to me. But basically, for any kind of trap, it's not much different than what we've been doing. It's still going to go from a generator to a switch to a trigger to the actual trap. The triggers can be found in the connection and switches, and I recommend using the laser tripwire because it's pretty easy, it's self-explanatory when there's a laser and somebody crosses it, it sets off the trigger. You can use like a pressure plate or somebody walks on it. You can use like a time delay, which I do not like, that it's controlled by a terminal, which I will explain a terminal in a little bit, it's really not that hard. But basically you can see what I'm doing, I'm going from the actual trap to the tripwire to the connection pad to the switch basically, which we're going to use a different switch than our like light switch. That way we can actually turn off our trap, that way it doesn't hurt us. Yet again, the order we're going to be going in is from the generator, to the switch, to the trigger, to the actual trap. That's pretty much it. It's basically the same thing as lights, except we're using a trap and using it for defense. We can't get it to connect to the generator again, so I'm going to have to mess around with it again and get it to fix. Basically, you want to get whoever's closer to the generator set up first. That way you can get that fixed and then whatever it's connecting to later on. Now that you have this all set up, you can walk in. If it's you coming home, you can go over here and press the switch. Make sure you remember which one. You'll see the red line go away so it doesn't hit you. But it's basically going to stop burglars or raiders or anything. And I've never really been raided by an enemy, but I don't know if it's for fun or there actually are raiders. I've never actually been raided so far in the game. So, But if you see what happens to them, they're going to get straight up toasted. So that's pretty much a trap. Remember, it goes from the generator to the switch where you can turn it on or off so it doesn't hit you 
to the trigger or the trip mine and then the actual trap which could be one of the little laser mines or actually like a flamethrower and that's basically traps it's really not that hard it seemed more difficult than it was gonna be and then we have one more thing we're gonna talk about in today's little video guys and that's gonna be the little LED light type things that we are creating that you've seen probably in the trailers and that you saw my little UG sign in the beginning which is probably one of the more complicated things and one of the most frustrating things to make while doing this I'm gonna explain basically what a terminal is and what it does It's pretty easy uh, but basically you want to go ahead and place you some light boxes as a little LED lights that you can control what color they are and you could spell stuff with and the main reason that I say it's so annoying to make is because you need like two copper for each of them and then you need a copper wire to connect them to a terminal. So it is so frustrating to collect like 60, you know, wires or 60 copper pieces. Not only that, each one of them requires one source of power. So if you have like 30 of them, you need three 10 power generators, which cost a lot of stuff. So it is really annoying to make and that's probably the main thing that took me so long to make this like base with. But here we go, it's not much different than anything else we've done. You want to go from the generators depending how many of these you're actually using. I'm not using much here but I had to use like two tens and two threes so 26 power total for my UG one. And then you want to go from the generators to the terminal, from the terminal to each of the LED lights. And you're just going to connect the LED lights like in a little chain reaction thing. Make sure you go individually between each one and not skip one, otherwise it will not work. At least as far as I know, you need to make sure they're all connected and then you'll see them all power up. And now here's how you're going to change the light. It's really easy. It's controlled in the terminal. Pretty much anything that's controlled in the terminal that you see like when you're creating a base and it's like, to do something, use the terminal. It's going to be just like this. It says light box control. Here it says select color, choose the color, and that's it. Pretty much anything else that's controlled by a terminal, it's just that easy too. The only thing that's hard with building settlements pretty much is just figuring it out like how the generator part works to like the switches and stuff. And then after that you pretty much get the idea of everything else that you're trying to build. And then you just use your creativity to build stuff. And yes, there's a lot of flaws in this, you know, building construction thing. And as you can tell right now, once you actually have them powered up and you choose the basic color you want, you can actually click on them to cycle colors and you know make your own little colors and do whatever you want last but definitely not least is furniture and I really don't need to explain anything it's just you pick the furniture you collect the materials and you make your living room or your entertainment system or your bedroom or your bathroom whatever it may be and that's pretty much it just collect the materials and you can make whatever you can you know lay some paintings or whatever you know lay some flags which I had the Brotherhood of Steel all over my house and that's pretty much the gist of the settlement, and that's pretty much a long video because it took me a long time to do this. It is actually 8 a.m. right now, guys. I will record it all the way through the night from tw or 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. So hopefully you guys did find this helpful. I'm sure hope you did. If you have any questions, you can comment below, but it's a little bit harder for me to read comments. So if you really want to get my attention and ask a question about building settlements or anything like this, I recommend you follow me on Twitter at UnitedGamer101 and ask me there. And if you don't want to ask a question, you need to still follow me anyway because, yeah, it's Twitter and everyone needs it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Be sure to subscribe for more Fallout 4 content. I hope to see you guys more on my channel. When mods come out, there's going to be plenty more videos coming up. This has been United Gamer 101, and remember, at the end of the day, this is not just a channel, it's a family. I'll see all you guys later.